Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, January 6, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever struggle with analyzing large packet captures? Of course, that's a quite common problem. And in today's guest diary by Yixing Talk, we do have an introduction to a new tool, at least new to me, NetFox Detective. NetFox Detective only runs on Windows, which is probably why I haven't personally run it, but it does distinguish itself by being able to analyze multiple gigabytes of packet captures and, well, not quite all the details that you sort of get from tools like Wireshark, but then again, just being able to get a handle on these large PCAPs is probably uh, worth uh, just checking out the tool and see if you like it. It's open source and uh, yes, the entire source code is accessible at GitHub, so not just uh, free. And of course, uh, with uh, the recent rise in the value of cryptocurrencies, they're back in the crosshairs of attackers. And the latest example is a piece of malware written in Go that apparently comes as an uninvited payload with some popular poker applications and the like. And while these applications do function as intended, they even set up some social media accounts and such for the companies that supposedly are creating these applications. The main goal appears to be to train users' crypto coin accounts. And yes, this particular malware is again written in Go and is actually attacking multiple operating systems. So far, versions have been identified on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So nothing yet apparently on the mobile operating systems unless Linux here also includes Android. And the way they target crypto coin users is by essentially offering applications that deal with cryptocurrencies. For example, the DAO poker application that is used to inject this Trojan is a cryptocurrency poker application. At this point of time, it should be known that if you are dealing with crypto coins, then uh, please make sure that you are using at least two-factor authentication, or if at all possible, keep your cryptocurrency as much as possible in an offline form, so uh, that way it can't be stolen by an application like this. And Google Chrome will be joining Firefox in assuming that if a user is entering a host name, that uh, the user intends to visit the website via HTTPS. So far, of course, HTTP was used in such a case if a protocol wasn't specified, but in a future version, this will change to HTTPS. Uh, the change was just committed to the Chromium source, so not not necessarily clear when exactly this will become part of a released version. And Google released its patch Tuesday update for January for Android. Overall, 46, I believe, different vulnerabilities were addressed. Now, without the sort of Qualcomm specific updates, there were two critical vulnerabilities that are being uh, patched here. One is a denial of service vulnerability and then a remote code execution in system. No details exactly what the nature of this vulnerability is or uh, whether or not it is exploitable easily. So as usual, no real emergency here in patching, but as soon as patches become available, you probably should update them within a couple of days. And if you're using Telegram, then you're probably more privacy aware and wouldn't like people to be able to automatically geolocate you. Telegram has an interesting feature that you uh, can enable or disable called people nearby. And essentially it publishes your location to people that are close to you. Now that's at least the idea. And uh, these people will then see their distance to you, but 
what an attacker can do and a researcher demonstrated this is of course spoof their location as they are accessing this API with uh, Telegram and use that then uh, to not only find users that are close to a specific location, but also by spoofing three different locations, triangulate their exact position. The position is displayed in one meter increments and of course also depends on the accuracy that uh, the user reports uh, to uh, Telegram. Now, Telegram considers this a feature and not a bug. And of course, there isn't really much they can do about an adversary spoofing a GPS location. So probably best to opt out out of that feature. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.